Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Charlie Fibrosis, and today, well, I went ahead and pulled the trigger and got the NASCAR Heat 5 2022 DLC pack. Now, I will say this. Um, I really do not like motorsports games. Um, I think that they... <laughs> Whew. I think that they've done a terrible job with managing this IP. And unfortunately, uh, Heat 5 was built on the backs of Monster Games. And I think that they did an okay job at this game. Is it the best thing that is out there? No. Is it the worst thing that is out there? No. But after all of this time, and we went through the absolute crap that was... NASCAR 21 Ignition. I still have not played it. I will never play that game. We get this. So let's go ahead, go to Race Now, and we can go over all the new features that we have here. Now, just like some of the previous Heat games and everything, uh, there is a case where when you start the game up, you can be able to switch between seasons. Uh, I can't remember which NASCAR game it was. I think it was maybe NASCAR Heat 4. You could be able to switch between the 2019 and 2018 season. can't remember exactly, but I know that there was one where you could be able to switch between the two. It's, it's been a while since I've played all of these Heat games. Um, and then this has got the next gen car in it. Now, there is something I do want to point out real quick. When you switch over to this particular season... You have to go to options. Now, I'm using a wheel. I have my stuff set up at uh, 720 degrees. But this is what I need to show you. So, input mapping. Input mapping, you definitely want to go ahead. Uh, at least I do. Um, I went ahead and mapped a clutch. But this is where it's important. Player 1 controls, steering wheel, set to whatever you want. This is what you need to be in. keep in mind. You need to have it set, if you're using a racing wheel, you need to set this to paddle. You cannot use stick shift, and I will explain in just a moment. The reason why you cannot use a stick shift is because the game, for whatever reason, knows that there is five gears on this car, but it does not have an input mapping, which we can go over here. And as you can see, there are only four gears. So if you're using an H-pattern shifter, like the old style NASCARs and everything before the next gen, you can do first, second, third, fourth, and reverse, whatever you map that out to. There is no fifth gear. Now, there is a piece of me that sees it being kind of accurate because there is the the next gen car is a sequential stick transmission. However, there really should be a way that the game could be able to tell you, hey, this mode only supports paddle shifting or uh, shift up, shift down. You cannot do a four gear mapping um, because then the problem is, is that you're t uh, blowing the chip when you're going down the straightaways and everything in fourth gear. Your engine's going to overheat and you're just not going to drive well. So. so let's look at the drivers that we've got with this update so we got eric almirola sorry we got aj allmendinger then eric almirola christopher bell greg biffle in the 44 josh balicki in the 77 ryan blaney in the 12 alex bowman in the 48 chase briscoe in the 14 chris bush in the 17 harrison burton in the 21 kurt bush in the 45 kyle bush in the 18 William Byron in the 24, Landon Castle in the 77, Ross Chastain in the 1, Austin Sendrick in the 2, Cole Custer in the 41, Austin Dillon in the 3, Ty Dillon in the 42, Chance Elliott in the 9, Todd Gilliland in the 38, Noah Gragson in the 62, Justin Haley in the 30, 31, Denny Hamlin in the 11, Kevin Harvick in the 4, Daniel Hemmerkin in the 16, uh, Loris Hesmans, um, from Team Hesburg. Um, I, I 
don't remember this guy. Uh, the only name that I remember sitting on this team was Jacques Villeneuve. That was it. Um, but I guess he ran more races and was a more prominent driver in the 27. Don't know. Timmy Hill in the 66. Eric Jones in the 43. Brad Keselowski in the number 6. Coyne LaJoy in the number 7. Kyle Larson in the 5. Joey Logano in the 20, 20, uh, 22. Michael McDowell in the 34. G BJ McLeod in the 78 with Motors Point Games sponsoring it. Ryan Priest in the 15. David Reagan in the 15. Tyler Reddick in the 8. Garrett Smithley in the 15. A lot of 15s. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 27. Daniel Suarez in the 99. Martin Truex Jr. in the 19. Bo Wallace in the 23. Cody Ware in the 51. JJ Yaley in the 55. And Kaz Grawler with the money team in the 50. And then you have your custom driver, which we're not even going to mind. So, uh, kind of a mixed bag, at least for my initial feelings on this. Uh, overall, the cars actually look pretty good. Um, I know that because it's a DLC pack, and they're not... It's just an add-on, and they've done this with the previous games. They're only going to feature the schemes that ran in the Daytona 500 in 2022. So I know that's kind of why they're not giving you more paint scheme options. But with the fact that there were actually some really good paint schemes on the next-gen car last season, uh, I'm a little disappointed that this is the best of the best that they could come up with. So, you know, a little bit of a mixed bag, but it is what it is. Uh, for example, I'll, I'll say this. If we go back to Blaney, who we're going to race as, if there was a scheme that I would have preferred over the Libman car, I would have really loved to see the Worth scheme or the Wabash National scheme. Um, I think that those, those designs look a lot better and more beautiful uh, compared to the Menards yellow and Libman green design. But hey, I'm not the one who made these schemes and made these decisions. All right, so we'll go ahead and click on Blaney. I uh, don't know that we will necessarily run the entire race. You know what? Let's go run at Auto Club. I was going to do Charlotte. We're going to run at Auto Club. So like I said, it is very, very important that you have a sequential shifter of some type. Uh, with my Thrustmaster T300, I have the uh, H8 stick shift. I can switch that over to a sequential uh uh, shifter if I want to uh, I just prefer generally having it as a well technically a seven speed uh, But using it as a four speed now something that they did do with this update was they threw the helmets on the drivers I don't know whether they just didn't have updated face models or they didn't want to work with that or uh, maybe something along the lines of like this being a DLC that with driver changes or whatever they couldn't get all the licensing I, I don't know uh, it is very weird to just see you know someone like Ryan Blaney as an example a guy that in the 2020 default uh, you could be able to see his face easy so whatever all right we do have a clutch turned on so we are gonna use that so first gear second gear third gear fourth gear fifth gear Let's go out. Run a couple of practice laps, kind of get on a grip underneath us. Now, I will say this. I don't know if they maybe made a slight adjustment with physics with this. Uh, but I will say that if they did, they actually did a pretty decent job. The car actually sticks really, really well to the racetrack. It, it does drift up a little bit if you give it too much power and you don't coast. 
Um, you still have to let out of the gas, or hit the brake on the track as need be, but definitely this car feels uh, more planted to the ground, uh, more beefy, and more stable on corners than the previous generation of cars. We're gonna go ahead and sling to the inside. And we went ahead and set the goal lap. We're gonna run another lap just to be safe. Engine actually sounds pretty good. Let's take a listen to the cockpit. Said an even faster lap that time. Okay. Alright, for whatever reason, my clutch pedal is not being detected. I'm going to pause the stream, I think, and I will figure that out. But, you know what? It's really not that big of a deal. We'll go ahead and just return to the garage. Okay. Had a really good practice run, so I'm happy about that. Uh, we're just going to do the next session. Car actually feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and qualify. Alright, and just a general look around the car. I mean, I'll say, I'll say this much. I'm not really bothered necessarily by the fact that it is the previous, previous year's schemes. Um, that most of them still work pretty well. Um, it's just bad opportunity, really. Um, bad timing. Um, we're already just about halfway into the NASCAR 2023 season. And I don't think it really would have been that difficult to be able to get the current day schemes and all that stuff set up for this. Um, but I feel, and there's a piece of me that just kind of wonders if, oh, that'll overshadow NASCAR 21 Ignition. No one plays NASCAR 21 Ignition. Like, NASCAR Heat 5 is not a barn burner of a game, but it's decent. It handles well. It's a little drab, but it handles well. Good place. Not bad. Um, and it feels, you know, as it is, it's a decently made racing game. I can accept decently made. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't think you can make perfect in this day and age, but it does suck, but... Yeah. I'm going to loosen this car up a couple of notches. We're going to go ahead and start this race, so. So, yeah. Let's see. Ty Dillon failed pre-race inspection. Daniel Suarez missed driver and induction. And Noah Gregson failed the optical scanning station multiple times. The only one that surprises me in that list is, honestly, Daniel Suarez. All right, here we go. Now, frankly, I think it does stick a little bit too well. Um, I know that in many other racing games that I've played for California, uh, you do have to worry about tire wear. Um, you do have to worry about the line that you take, and the back end can definitely swap out on you. 
this this is pretty well buttoned up like it, it's pretty done well stuck to the surface and as we pull up the leaderboard I mean, we've already got almost a second and a half over William Byron though that distance is closing a little bit Maybe I have to increase the difficulty. I'm already running at expert, or hard at least. Second to last. So. There's still little things like, for example, it's kind of stupid that there's no pit lane animations when you pit under caution. It's just a transition screen to the restart um, the game the game's kind of easy for the most part um, I can't really remember in all the times that I played the NASCAR heat games that things were ever really a challenge and in my honest opinion I think where they where monster games kind of got things right or well, Motorsport Games before they went all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Like, the SRX game that came out. Like, the Tony Stewart games, eh, they're okay. The SRX game is actually really solid. For, for a very simple game and what it is, I really like it. I even bought the DLC for that game, which gave me the uh, Leap Mouse uh, stock car. And I've had a blast with that. That actually is a really, really fun series. I just wish that that could be your starting path and you could be able to just skip all the dunt stuff uh, if you wanted to get to the SRX. Because there was at one point where I was playing that game. I think I binged it over the course of a weekend. I ended up winning like three championships or something like that in that series. It was not easy, easy, but it definitely... Once you get all your stuff upgraded and everything like that, it can get easier. Um, but it's fun. It's a very, very fun car to drive. Uh, even the SRX cars, for which the game is all based on and centered around, like, it's a good game. There's definitely... Uh, there's definitely a skeleton here that can work. Um, and, frankly... This game, even in and of itself, it doesn't look ugly per se. It looks okay. I mean, in terms of like newer graphics and looks and everything like that, like I'd say overall the Eutechnic games are a little bit more disappointing. I don't think they hold up as well. This actually does not look terrible. Maybe a little oversaturated in terms of bright color, but. It's okay, like I keep saying. I think we're only going to complete the first stage and we'll call it there, but... Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd say in this case, just... As it goes, I'd say take it or leave it. Um, if you don't have 21 Ignition, and for whatever reason you don't have NASCAR Racing 2003 season... And maybe you have a lot of time invested in Heat 5 and actually would kind of like that. You know, for $10, the DLC is definitely pr a little pricey for such an old game. Um, but I don't think it's a bad inclusion. I don't, I don't think it really takes anything away. It's got some weird quirks to it. Like, like I said, I needed to change over to a oh I got ooh. oh wow okay um ooh. okay
Okay, so I forgot about this. I actually set the fuel and tire wear at four times, to make it a little bit more challenging. Oh wow, the the grip in the car is actually lost a little bit. I caught it, I didn't lose it. But um Wow, I just I was not expecting that. Alright, let's uh let's see here. I think I'm actually gonna have a live green flag pit stop. Let's see let's see how that goes. I think if I'm gonna run out, I'm gonna run out right about here. Okay, let's pack it full of fuel and let's see. No need for repairs. Yeah, let's go for the four, t four tires if we're gonna get fuel. We go up a tiny bit. I got two clicks on the tape and I'm okay with the wedge. Wedge is good as it is. So yeah, they'll give they'll give you a live cutscene esque pit stop under green. They won't give you one under yellow, which is a little silly. And we've still got. I still have a big lead over second place. Oh, well, we won the stage, so cool. <clears throat> you know what? I don't need to pit. Let's, let's just finish this out. <coughs> let's see what happens. I swear I feel like I'm going crazy, but I think I can hear like an air wrench going off in my right ear. I wonder if the sound got bugged. Like, this sounds like garage or pit crew noise.
I'm just kind of blown away. I mean, I know that it's because it's multiplied times four, but like, look at how worn out the tires are. All right, here we go, pit stop number two. 55, I think is where it said it was. Drop the speed driver. Speed driver, did you pass me? Ah, darn it. This is going to definitely put a wrench in things. We probably won't win stage two, but uh, definitely will give me a shot to make it up in stage three. Okay, that's going to be interesting. I don't know how that's going to affect me. I, I don't know if I'm going to be on the lead lap or not. Yellow flag's out. Don't pit. Got no re they gave me the lead back. Okay. Whoa. Was, uh, that was really lucky. I don't know why they brought the yellow out. I, like, that is that is some that's one of the criticism I have of the game too. They do not have a replay system. Uh, if there is a wreck on the track, you will never know what the heck happened to bring out the yellow in the first place. And that's something you, the Eutechnics games actually did and got right. It wasn't usually the greatest looking thing it'd be very goofy but yeah like they at least showed you at replay why the yellow was out I actually would have been interesting interested why did the yellow come out was there a big stack up at the end of pit lane did someone run out of fuel and get plowed someone just run out of gas and stop on the racetrack like what brought out the yellow But whatever it was, that 
like I said, that definitely helped me. Alright, now here comes the grand question, do we pit under caution to just get a little bit more fuel, knowing that we will have to pit again during the stage? Okay. Well, that's the end of the stage, so... What are the other guys going to do? They're pitting, okay. We're going to pit. We're going to do everything. We're going to come out in second. So, by my calculations, when we run out of gas, we will get fuel again, and we, once we do that, we will be good for the rest of the race. We won't need any more gas.
I can only imagine what the gap is that I put over Kyle Larson. Jeez, oh Pete's almost five and a half seconds and more. Sheesh. I'm actually going to take a calculated, a uh, little bit of a calculated risk. Let's not pit for tires. This next go around, when we pit this lap, let's not pit for tires and see what happens. Everyone else is coming in for service. 55. Um, okay. T posing pit crew man. That was weird. Alright, let's see if the tires hold out for 10 laps. It's definitely going to be a bit of a challenge. I can feel the grip just like gone out of the side of the car. Alright, we just took the lead. We can really just coast it more or less. Like, we're going to win by a big margin. Even when Briscoe gets past in the pits, like, 
Keselowski is going into the turn, and I'm already halfway down the backstretch. We still have good speed. I am kind of happy, though, that the uh, caution did not come out when I was down in the pits. I wanted to see what a green flag finish would be like. Six to go. Let's see if the tires hold out. Okay, the temp is up because we did pack it with a little bit of grill tape. I think, I think we might be okay. I just wanted to try and tighten the car up a little bit if the tire is starting to, starting to lose a grip. But I think I overdid it. Joey Logano is in second. We got ourselves a 12 and a half second lead. Keselowski and Logano, we can be able to get into the draft too. Go to the outside, JJ Yearly. Outside Timmy Hill in the corner. Twenty-six percent, still high on the temp. Seven laps remaining of fuel. Probably four laps to go, I think. Four laps right there. Cody Ware. Big slide right there. Car's not handling ill, not badly at least. 21%. Still has really good bite in the center of the turn. Tires are lit up. <laughs> I mean, I want, really wanted to test this out. I wanted to see what we could do. Do we have a tire blowout? How badly does it affect the handling? And it really, it really is not hurting the handling horribly. Like the centering spring is really what's keeping me kind of aligned on the wheel. I don't feel a bad kick out slide at the entrance, center, the exit of the turn. Nothing feels bad by any means, like I said. 14%. 13%. Well, I don't think I'm going to get it down to zero. Hell. Swing to the inside of BJ McLeod. It's, it still has got good grip. I don't feel any bog down. I don't feel any slide. Like nothing on this car feels poor. Into the final turn. Try to get to the inside of that Jones boy. We're going to clear right on by. 5% on the right rear. Race finished. Race is over. We won. Yellow flag flew. Wow. Alright, you know what? Oh, I did not mean to do that. Okay. Yeah, I can... I can hear wrenches cranking in the background. I, I think that there was an audio glitch.
I'd say the only thing that really sucks on this game is the faces. The faces are kind of lifeless. Emotionless. Wow, oh, okay. Fine priest. I wondered who blew up. Okay. Finish event. Except. Alright, so that is about it. Um that was actually very interesting. Now I'm gonna be honest with you here. It has been a long time since I have played this game, so I don't know if the regular cars were gonna feel the exact same way. I'm I can even go ahead and show you guys my settings here real quick, just to just to show that off. Um, you know, we got difficulty preset at hard. I don't know why we have brake smoothing at low. I meant to have that turned off, but a manual transmission. Uh, eh, okay, the AI difficulty is a little... There's a little there. But I mean, that was definitely a challenge. It wasn't. Oh, I mean, okay. It wasn't really all that challenging from a, from a racing perspective, but I mean, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, what do I think of all of this? Well, like I said, uh, $10 is a little bit expensive for a older game. And it doesn't really help that in the case of, you know, NASCAR 21 Ignition being the dumpster fire that it is, that I feel that motorsports games should be rewarded for coming out with something like this. Um, it's nice. I don't think it's necessary. It handles pretty well. But it's... It's okay. Really, I think that it's more or less just the 2020 car with just cosmetic changes to it. I can't tell you, truthfully, whether it actually handles better or if it handles the same. I don't know. I don't know that they necessarily got the physics part of that down right. But it does look nice. I will give it that. It, the cars look nice. They look accurate to what was raised. Um, don't know what this necessarily means for Motorsport Games because they are in a lot, a lot of trouble across the board. Um, there's a lot of people wagging on them. Uh, and everything just, yeah, a real, real big situation there. Uh, like I said, I do wish that they went ahead and did the 2023 cars, to be completely honest. Uh, but it's okay, uh, so, yeah. Don't know really what to come away with this, but uh, at least it was kind of fun. I haven't played this game in a long, long time now, so. I don't know. Uh, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later.